The following incident is documented in the diary of Jonathan Harker, a real estate broker from England, regarding his visit to the castle of Count Dracula in Transylvania. The text from Harker's diary is published in the 1897 novel Dracula by Bram Stoker. It begins as Harker explores the castle by himself. At last, I found one door at the top of the stairway, which, though it seemed to be locked, gave a little under pressure. I tried it harder and found that it was not really locked, but that the resistance came from the fact that the hinges had fallen somewhat and the heavy door rested on the floor. This was evidently the portion of the castle occupied by the ladies of bygone days, for the furniture had more air of comfort than any I had seen. The windows were curtainless, and the yellow moonlight flooding in through the diamond panes enabled one to see even colors, whilst it softened the wealth of dust which lay all over and disguised in some measure the ravages of time and the moth. My lamp seemed to be of little effect in the brilliant moonlight, but I was glad to have it with me, for there was a dread loneliness in the place which chilled my heart and made my nerves tremble. Here I am, sitting at a little oak table, and writing in my diary in shorthand all that has happened since I closed it last night. When I had written in my diary and had replaced the book and pen in my pocket, I felt sleepy. Count Dracula's warning to sleep only in my assigned room came into my mind, but I took a pleasure in disobeying it. The soft moonlight soothed, and the white expanse without gave a sense of freedom which refreshed me. I determined not to return tonight to my gloom-haunted rooms, but to sleep here, where of old ladies had sat and sung and lived sweet lives. I drew a great couch out of its place near the corner, so that as I lay, I could look at the lovely view to east and south, and, unthinking of and uncaring for the dust, I composed myself for sleep. I was not alone. The room was the same, unchanged in any way since I came into it. I could see along the floor, in the brilliant moonlight, my own footsteps marked where I had disturbed the long accumulation of dust. In the moonlight opposite me were three young women, ladies by their dress and manner. I thought at the time that I must be dreaming when I saw them, for though the moonlight was behind them, they threw no shadow on the floor. They came close to me and looked at me for some time, and then whispered together. Two were dark, and had high aquiline noses, like Count Dracula, and great dark piercing eyes that seemed to be almost red when contrasted with the pale yellow moon. The other was fair, as fair as can be, with great wavy masses of golden hair and eyes like pale sapphires. All three had brilliant white teeth that shone like pearls against the ruby of their voluptuous lips. There was something about them that made me uneasy, some longing and at the same time some deadly fear. I felt in my heart a wicked, burning desire that they would kiss me with those red lips. They whispered together, and then they all three laughed, such a silvery, musical laugh, but as hard as though the sound never could have come through the softness of human lips. It was like the intolerable, tingling sweetness of water glasses when played on by a cunning hand. The fair girl shook her head coquettishly and the other two urged her on. One said, Go on, you are the first, and we shall follow. Yours is the right to begin. The other added, He is young and strong. There are kisses for us all. I lay quiet, looking out under my eyelashes in an agony of delightful anticipation. The fair girl advanced and bent over me till I could feel the movement of her breath upon me. Sweet it was in one sense, honey sweet, and sent the same tingling through the nerves as her voice, but with a bitter underlying the sweet, a bitter offensiveness, as one smells in blood. I was afraid to raise my eyelids, but looked out and saw perfectly under the lashes. The girl went on her knees and bent over me, simply gloating. 
there was a deliberate voluptuousness which was both thrilling and repulsive and as she arched her neck she actually licked her lips like an animal till i could see in the moonlight the moisture shining on the scarlet lips and on the red tongue as it lapped the white sharp teeth lower and lower went her head as the lips went below the range of my mouth and chin and seemed about to fasten on my throat then she paused and i could hear the churning sound of her tongue as it licked her teeth and lips and i could feel the hot breath on my neck then the skin of my throat began to tingle as one's flesh does when the hand that is to tickle it approaches nearer and nearer i could feel the soft shivering touch of the lips on the supersensitive skin of my throat and the hard dents of two sharp teeth just touching and pausing there i closed my eyes in a languorous ecstasy and waited waited with beating heart but at that instance another sensation swept through me as quick as lightning i was conscious of the presence of the count and of his being as if lapped in a storm of fury as my eyes opened involuntarily i saw his strong hand grasp the slender neck of the fair woman and with a giant's power draw her back the blue eyes transformed with fury the white teeth champing with rage and the fair cheeks blazing red with passion but the count never did i imagine such wrath and fury even to the demons of the pit his eyes were positively blazing the red light in them was lurid as if the flames of hellfire blazed beneath them his face was a deadly pale and the lines of it were hard drawn like wires the thick eyebrows that met over the nose now seemed like a heaving bar of white hot metal with a fierce sweep of his arm he hurled the woman from him and then motioned to the others as though he were beating them back it was the same imperious gesture that i had seen used to the wolves in a voice which the low and almost a whisper seemed to cut through the air and then ring around the room he said how dare you touch him any of you how dare you cast eyes on him when i have forbidden it back i tell you all this man belongs to me beware how you meddle with him or you'll have to deal with me the fair girl with a laugh turned to answer him you yourself never loved you never love on this the other women joined and such a mirthless hard soulless laughter ranged through the room that it almost made me faint to hear it seemed like the pleasure of fiends then the count turned after looking at my face attentively and said in a soft whisper yes i too can love you yourselves can tell it from the past is it not so well now i promise you that when i am done with him you shall kiss him at your will now go go i must awaken him for there is work to be done are we to have nothing tonight said one of them with a low laugh as she pointed to the bag which he had thrown upon the floor and which moved as though there were some living thing within it for answer he nodded his head one of the women jumped forward and opened it if my ears did not deceive me there was a gasp and a low wail as of a half smothered child the women closed around whilst i was aghast with horror but as i looked they disappeared and with them the dreadful bag there was no door near them and they could not have passed me without noticing they simply seemed to fade into the moonlight and pass out through the window for i could see outside their dim shadowy forms for a moment before they entirely faded away then the horror overcame me and i sank down unconscious this ends jonathan harker's first encounter with the vampire sisters in dracula's castle but it would not be his last thank you for watching please subscribe to this channel for new videos every week or two and visit a public library or bookstore near you to get your copy of Dracula by Bram Stoker.